integration. So, uh, of course, we have seen uh, various types of functions, uh, continuous functions, and then more importantly, holomorphic functions. And uh, uh, of course, it's not done yet. The study of holomorphic function. There will be several uh, things related to that. But uh, to have a comprehensive study, we also need uh, this uh, theory of complex integration. And then only we will lay, like see more properties of uh, holomorphic functions and other stuff. OK, so uh, here, of course, uh, means if you think of uh, real analysis uh, while doing integration of uh, functions of real variable taking values in R, uh, we were integrating over intervals, right? So we used to, uh, let's say, have an interval and then we used to take partitions and then we used to take this upper sum, lower sum and uh, or various kind of Riemann sums. And then uh, we used to define uh, what is the Riemann integral and all. So here uh, uh, in complex uh, numbers, we do not have intervals anymore. OK, so therefore, uh, like what will happen is that uh, in complex analysis, the integration will be about integrating on curves. OK, so instead of uh, integrating on intervals, we are going to integrate like in place of that, we are going to integrate on curves. OK, so uh, that is the reason why I had told you in the last lecture that we need to uh, have some sort of idea how the Riemann stringes integral work. OK, so uh, I asked you to have a look at uh, the uh, basic notions of uh, Riemann stringes integral and uh, I'm just going to briefly recall uh, things related to that. I am not going to prove anything. Uh, about Riemann stringes integral, but I'm just going to uh, briefly touch upon things which are relevant. OK, so for example, uh, one thing that one starts with is called uh, functions of bounded variation. So have you guys seen functions of bounded variation before? Yeah, OK, so uh, recall what is the definition? So a function uh, let's say here I'm writing as gamma uh, because generally I will be denoting my paths by gamma. So function f from uh, gamma from closed interval a b to c is uh, said to be of bounded variation. So I'm writing in shorthand bv. If uh, there is means so first of all one has to talk about the variation and then uh, the variation should be uh, bounded. Okay, so if uh, there is a constant m positive such that uh, for any partition, so you take the what is the variation? So for any partition, partition p of closed interval a to b, what do I have? So uh, let us say p equal to. So partition means, uh, as you know. So I will have a set of n points or n plus one points, let's say. Tn equal to b. So uh, for any partition of this closed interval a b, the variation with respect the variation of gamma with respect to p is bounded above by m. So this m is uniform. OK, so uh, the variation So what is variation? We gen generally denote it by V gamma P. So this is uh, summation I from, uh, or let me write K. Sorry, what is in Prashant? Okay, so uh, K from zero to up to N minus one, uh, gamma of uh, TK plus one, minus gamma of tk this in absolute value this is the uh, variation that is called so this thing uh, has to be less than m okay so uh, that is what so the uh, variation of the function is uh, bounded okay so that's called functions of bounded variation okay so uh, therefore what we are seeing here is that uh, no matter what partition you take, so how small, small, uh, like how fine partition you take, it doesn't matter really. 
uh, you have like if you take this kind of a sum that is bounded above by this n okay so that uh, that is what it means to say that the function is a bounded variation so whatever the variation of your function might be uh, and depending on means like uh, irrespective of any partition that you take uh, you will always get some that it is bounded by uh, some uniform constant m okay. so uh, for example you here there is a concept of total variation so uh, the total variation so the total variation of gamma uh, denoted by by uh, v of gamma okay just there is no partition anymore is defined to be <coughs> the supremum of uh, this supremum of uh, v gamma p uh, where p varies where p varies over all the partitions of closed interval ab okay so this is what uh, is the uh, definition of total variation okay so uh, means of course if uh, gamma is a function of bounded variation so then this v gamma is going to be a non negative real number right is it clear yes sir yeah so uh, you see means if if a function is a bounded variation so this v gamma p uh, like for irrespective of whatever p you take it is bounded above by some constant so if you collect the set of all real numbers uh, means collect all these numbers v gamma p then these are uh, this is a bounded above subset of uh, non negative real numbers and therefore it's going to have a supremum uh, non so yeah bounded above subsets of non negative real numbers so therefore it's going to have a supremum and that supremum is called the total variation okay so uh, here one thing which i would like to mention is that um, so let let me just try to draw a few picture okay so let us say this is the curve of the this is the graph of the function gamma okay so or or like it's not really graph but let's say on c uh, this is how the function looks like okay so on c this is the set of points which you can see as image of gamma okay so now if i take uh, partitions let's say on a to b so uh, let's say this is one point this is another point this is another point these are some points of the partition okay so then uh, by taking this uh, p gamma p what i am essentially doing i am essentially calculating these distances and then i am adding them up okay so uh, this is what i am doing essentially right in v gamma p i am essentially calculating the sum uh, like lengths that i have indicated in uh, maroon color correct is it clear as yes, sir. so if i take some part yes, sir. P, then this uh, v gamma p is nothing but uh, whatever uh, the kind of the length that i have accumulated uh means or i have drawn in terms of this maroon color so that's number 1 that's the first observation now the second observation is that let us take a finer partition of this so let us introduce few more points in between somewhere over here then uh for this finer partition what happens to the uh, v gamma p you see the v gamma p is going to be in that case uh, something like this okay so there is some minute difference but nevertheless you can understand correct now uh, if you uh, just from the picture you try to imagine that uh, in some sense when i take finer and finer partition i am approx so this line whatever the maroon line was approximating the curve in some way this curved gamma but the approximation given by a finer partition would be a better approximation isn't it 
Is it clear yes. from the picture? Yes, sir. Yeah. So the what I'm trying to say is that the approximation, whatever is uh, like when I take one partition and then try to see this variation, they kind of trying to ap approximate uh, your. Uh, so these when I join these lines, they're kind of approximating your curve. And when I take a final partition, I see that I am having a better approximation. OK, so in fact, it should also be clear that whatever. So if, if I can think of something called the length of the curve, then uh, actually when I take finer and finer partition, of course, when I take this all these uh, sums over all the partitions, they're kind of giving me the length of the curve. Is it clear? From the picture. So the moment I take uh, finer and finer partition, I'm going to go closer and closer to my function or this uh, curve. And therefore, that's going to give me better and better, uh, uh, as I said, approximation to the curve. And therefore, uh, means we will be able to, in some sense, we'll be able to say uh, what is the length of the curve. Okay, So that is the reason why uh, this V gamma, what is what, what I have said, the total variation is often called. Uh, so this is often called the length of the gamma. So is this clear to everybody? Yes. Yes. Sir. Yes. yes sir. Great. So uh, remember this. Uh, that means you see why I needed this notion length of gamma is for very simple reason. When we had we were integrating over uh, some interval a to b, we knew what is the length of the int uh, interval. It it was b minus a, and we knew like uh, means. We knew the length of the interval where we are integrating. So when we are going to integrate over curves, we need uh, this information as well. OK, so what is exactly our uh, length of the curve? OK, so that's going to be uh, crucial. You will see later. But nevertheless, uh, you understand that uh, like it, it's very natural to expect that 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 has, that is going to play a role uh, in our theory. OK, so this is what we have. So now um, let us uh, yes, make some uh, observations, uh, so elementary observations. So uh, one more thing which I would like to say. So here I am taking gamma is a function from uh, closed interval AB to C. So therefore uh, we can write, we can write uh, gamma as U plus IV, where U and V are functions on closed interval AB. And these are real valued functions. OK, so uh, we can write this. Then uh, this is a simple exercise which I will not do. You know how to do this. Then uh, gamma is of uh, BV if and only if U and V are of BV. OK, so uh, if both uh, the real part and the imaginary part is of bounded variation, then the actual curve is also of uh, bounded variation. OK, so that's a very simple exercise because you know how to compare the real part and the imaginary part with the absolute value. And uh, so therefore, this you will get immediately. OK, and uh, the elementary observations like, for example, includes that uh, if you take a finer partition, uh, then the variation is going to be like we are going to have uh, better estimates. So the variation for a finer partition is going to be bigger than the variation of a like smaller partition. So the, these are some basic observations that that one could have. Similarly, like uh, means for example, if you have some uh, uh, function and if you multiply it by a scalar, so when you take a variation, the scalar is going to come out like that. Or if you have two functions, uh, which are of bounded variation, you take their sum, then the variation of the sum is going to be less than or equal to the variation of the uh, each of the individual functions and things like that. OK, so some uh, basic observations which you can have. I don't want to uh, write them explicitly down because um, this you might have seen already before. But anyway, so this is what uh, we have. And now uh, let me <laughs> tell you what is uh, going to be a smooth curve or uh, 
yeah piece wise smooth curve okay so because many a times we are going to work with uh, piece wise smooth or smooth curves okay so uh, generally so let me uh, give a definition so u uh, is an open subset of c uh, by a path okay, by a path uh, gamma uh, uh, in u we mean as i said uh, a continuous function a continuous we mean a continuous function gamma from closed interval a b to u okay uh, for some uh, a less than or equal to b so sometimes i might have a constant path as well okay so that could be one thing and uh, or, or just one point so we will say that or maybe i write open interval doesn't matter okay so anyway i can even say that okay, we call gamma to be smooth gamma to be smooth so i will have a smooth curve so i will say gamma is smooth uh, if if uh, for each uh, for each t in the interval uh, each t in the interval a to b uh, gamma prime t exists so that means gamma is uh, differentiable and uh, gamma prime t uh, which is a function from open interval a b to c is a continuous function okay so uh, then such kind of curves are called smooth curves so here if you are wondering that what do i mean by a function defined on closed interval a b to u to be differentiable and all that so here again you are just going to uh, separate gamma as a real part and imaginary part and each of them are going to be differentiable as a function of real variable taking values in r and uh, so that's what it means and i am saying that the derivative which is again taken as the derivative of gamma is nothing but the derivative of the real part of gamma plus the derivative of the imaginary part of gamma times i so uh, similarly so that that function also you can think of it's it's a function each of them are continuous okay so each of the derivative of the real part and the imaginary part they are continuous functions okay so if we have this kind of uh, scenario then we call gamma to be smooth okay so we are going to essentially work with uh, smooth curves okay and uh, or uh, if not smooth uh, then we can work with piecewise smooth so what is piecewise smooth so we call gamma uh, to be piecewise smooth smooth if there exists some partition again there exists uh, a partition p a partition p a partition p uh, so let me write down what is p p is a naught less than uh, a which is equal to t naught less than t1 so on so forth tn which is equal to p so i have a partition such that gamma is smooth on each of the sub intervals on so i have to i will have open ti to ti plus 1 for all uh, i from 0 to up to n minus 1 okay so if i have that then we will call it piecewise smooth okay so it means i am going to allow uh, certain points uh, in between where the function might not be smooth so that might not even be differentiable but i do not care okay because uh, we can always take partitions and uh, take things so like as far as the integration is concerned uh, some finitely many points are not going to uh, be uh, of much interest so therefore uh, we are going to just uh, we might also work with piecewise smooth curves okay so uh, why am i 
telling you about piecewise smooth things. The reason why I am uh, telling you about the smooth curves or piecewise smooth curves is that these curves are of bounded variation. Okay, so uh, we have actually a theorem. So this is again, which I am not going to prove because it's not part of complex analysis, but this is true is that uh, let gamma from closed interval AB to C uh, be a smooth curve or let's say piecewise smooth curve, piecewise smooth path or curve, whatever you say. Then gamma is of bounded variation. Then gamma is a bounded variation and not only that, I can tell you what is the uh, total variation or what is the length of the curve. So then V of gamma is going to be E to be uh, gamma prime T, absolute value, gamma prime T dt. Okay, so that is what it is going to be. Okay, so here of course you should remember one thing, this absolute value uh, means I just can't integrate gamma prime t uh, directly okay so here because gamma prime t is uh, taking complex values so i am looking for a real number v gamma is a real number so here uh, what we do is a to b integral mod of gamma prime t dt okay so uh, this essentially uses uh, some mean value theorem uh, and uh, definition of integral and all that okay so what it seems it means like what it turns out is that if we have a piecewise smooth curve or smooth curve whatever you wish so there the length of the gamma is given by integral from a to b mod of gamma prime t dt right fine is it all right yeah yes uh, we are going to uh, take this thing for granted uh, perhaps you have seen it on uh, yeah but anyway uh, I am not going to prove this. So now the point is um, <clears throat> what I have to do now, I have to tell you about uh, Riemann Stenzies integral and then of course we need to uh, connect it to how uh, we are going to see it uh, in case of our things. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, tell you that. So just, yeah, just a second. Yeah. Yes. This one. Okay, great. So let us see. So this is uh, theorem again. So as I said, this is Riemann Stenzies integral. Yeah. So what does this theorem tell, tell us? So it tells us that uh, let gamma from closed interval a b to c uh, be of bounded variation. Your B of bounded variation, uh, and suppose f from closed interval a b to c uh, is continuous. So I am uh, taking a function, a curve which is of bounded variation, and a function which is a continuous function. So why I am taking continuous is because I am going to integrate that particular function. Okay, so uh, just so that I do not end up having any difficulty, so that's why we uh, are taking continuous functions. Okay, so uh, then there exists there, so then there exists a complex number, complex number i such that capital I, and I think such that uh, for every epsilon positive means uh, there exists delta positive so that whenever you take partitions uh, with sub intervals uh, less than or equal to delta means length of the sub interval less than or equal to delta the integral uh, like i is going to be the integral like uh, that means whatever you take these riemann sums kind of thing they are going to be very close to i so let me write down so for every epsilon, there exists delta positive such that such that for any 
partition P of uh, sub interval every partition P of closed interval AB, let me write with sub intervals with sub intervals yeah with sub intervals of length less than delta we have so how do you define uh, the integral you, you think of in terms of the demand sum similar thing uh, k from 0 to up to n minus 1 um, f of tk tilde we can take some sum tk tilde times gamma of tk minus gamma of tk yeah so maybe gamma of tk plus one let me write tk plus one minus gamma of tk so this is in absolute value less than epsilon where p is uh, a equal to t naught less than t1 so on so forth less than tn equal to b and uh, your tk tilde is some point between uh, tk to tk plus one so this is in the interval tk to tk plus one okay so uh, this is how you take uh, kind of riemann sum so here it's uh, riemann still just sum and uh, there should be an uh, there exists and uh, a complex number i so that uh, this uh, riemann still just sum uh, is in epsilon neighborhood of i okay so that's the uh, statement that you have so exactly like uh, riemann integration so you you start with a, you start with an uh, interval a to b you have a continuous function then you will get a continuous function on closed interval a b taking values in r so then there will be a real number i such that whenever you take any partition uh, of uh, like there will for any given epsilon there will be a delta so that whenever you take any partition who's uh, with sub intervals of less length less than delta you are going to have that uh, when you take the riemann sum with respect to that partition uh, that riemann sum is going to be uh, very in, in epsilon neighborhood of uh, the integral whatever the integral i so this i is called the uh, Riemann integral. So similarly, here uh, uh, this i is called the Riemann still just integral. Okay, so let me write uh, this number i is called the integral, integral of f with respect to gamma over closed interval a b. Okay, so uh, and you can denote and we denote uh, i is like integral a to b so sorry maybe i should <coughs> write in the next page okay so we denote i equal to integral a to b f t uh, or f d gamma let, let me just write like this <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is the statement of Riemann still just integral. Okay, so uh, you guys have seen this, right? Yeah? No, sir. You have not seen this? You, you have not done any, uh, means in your real analysis course, you have not studied Riemann no. still just integral? No, sir. Oh, okay so anyway no sir fine so anyway uh, okay if you have not studied then let me just as i said just try to imagine what i am so in riemann integration you must have studied right all of you right yes so what do you do essentially there how you take riemann sums and then you say that the riemann sums as you vary over partitions like you take finer and finer partitions the riemann sums should have some kind of a limit Correct? That's how Riemann integration is defined, isn't it? Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. So, what, yes, sir. so what you used to do? So you used to, so let's say I have an interval A to B. So you used to part, take partition. So this is A equal to T naught, T1, T2, and so forth, and so on, so forth, Tn. 
and then what you have so let's say i want to integrate this curve f then what do you do so you means you you generally so you can take lower sum upper sum or you can just take any arbitrary riemann sum so any arbitrary riemann sum means you generally you will take some point arbitrary point and uh, you are going to so let's say i take this point i choose this point so i'm going to uh, collect all this uh, area of this rectangles okay so let's say in this case uh, the interesting point is this one so these kind of uh, rectangles i can i can choose any kind of rectangles see my drawing is not good so let's say here my rectangle is this one similarly in this case uh, let's say my rectangle is th the point that i am interested in is this one so therefore i will take these ones so accordingly you can take uh, several of these uh, boxes or rectangles and you can sum them up and that's going to give you the riemann sum and eventually you have a riemann integral means a function is riemann integrable or uh, whatever it means so that is when there exists a real number when uh, these kind of sums uh, like these riemann sums are in some epsilon neighborhood of uh, this that particular quantity i whenever uh, like uh, for any uh, whenever your sub intervals are of less than length delta okay so here what i was to do so what is uh, if you see what is this uh, area of this rectangle so this area of this rectangle is t1 minus t0 times whatever is f of uh, let's say uh, t0 prime okay or t0 tilde so similarly uh, let's say this one is having area uh, t3 minus t2 times some f of uh, t2 prime or t2 tilde okay so similarly you can think of each of these uh, rectangles having some uh, area uh, depending on of course the width of the rectangle is already clear this is ti plus 1 minus ti and uh, the height of the rectangle depends on the point that you take so essentially when you take the riemann sum what you are supposed to get you are supposed to get f of ti uh, so how did i write <laughs> yeah tk tilde so f of tk tilde times tk plus 1 minus tk correct this is the riemann sums that you used to take isn't it yeah? yes sir yes sir you said some uh, function is integrable uh, means like uh, riemann integrable means these kind of things when you take finer and finer partition should have a limit which is actually the which is called which is the value of the integration so exactly similarly one defines riemann stages integral so uh, of course here i had a closed interval ab or an open interval ab whatever it might be i know what is the length of the interval so riemann stages integral talks about integrating functions on curves okay so here of course i am taking functions which are complex valued but for the moment just imagine functions which are of real valued okay and then i want to integrate the function on the curve so then what happens so they are no longer i don't have an interval anymore but i have a path which is defined a continuous function which is defined on the interval ab and i want to integrate along the path okay so therefore what first information i need is that whether my path uh, let's say is is of finite length or not like uh, closed interval ab is of finite length or open interval ab is of finite length so i can integrate on that the first thing that you need that okay on which i am integrating that should be a finite thing that should make sense so uh, this is why functions of bounded variation comes in so that's what is the uh, requirement which i have put over here that i have a function of bounded variation now once i have this so this is the parameterizing thing like i need to integrate my function on this kind of a curve okay so then what do i have to do again i am going to collect exactly similarly the riemann sums so here these are called riemann stages sums so exactly i have done that so you see i was telling you on this picture is that uh, when i take partitions and when i was joining these intermediate points like when i was drawing this Uh, uh this what you call line segments so they were essentially approximating the length of the curve that's number one but effectively what we were getting here is that uh, so it it's kind of exactly partitioning the interval 
Okay, so exactly I was doing that kind of a phenomena over here. So therefore you see this is uh, essentially like I was taking the width what I was taking over there. So this this part is kind of the width and this part is the functional value in between um, what do you call uh, in between uh, the those two points uh, TK plus one and TK. Okay. Plus one. TK. So just a second, probably my internet is lagging over here. OK, fine, so this should be better. <coughs> OK, great. So uh, uh, this is so that's the basic idea about Riemann stages integral. So once I have a function, uh, function of bounded variation, uh, one can integrate a continuous function on that uh, on that curve okay curve which is a bounded variation so anyway I, as i said i have very limited scope to tell you in detail uh, the proof of these facts okay so uh, these things uh, you have to do it on your own i have given you the statement and uh, this is analogous to uh, the study of uh, riemann integration and that is the reason i had told you in the last class itself to browse these things but anyway nevertheless uh, just uh, take it in that spirit that this is very uh, close to what we have been doing in Riemann integration. So this part reflects the length of the uh, partition or uh, like that and here means length of each of the sub intervals and uh, this guy is the some functional value in that sub interval. Okay, so uh, we have this and uh, eventually we get this one. Okay, great. So, uh, yeah, so I have uh, this particular theorem, which is existence of Riemann stages integral. Anyway, so is this clear to everybody? Yeah, the yes, sir. Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, so it, it is yes, sir. very much analogous to uh, doing uh, Riemann integration. Okay, absolutely nothing else. Okay, great. So I know how to integrate this. Now, again, I have to tell you another formula. But as, as I said, these things uh, probably uh, it should have been done in some real analysis course. But anyway, uh, what is not done is not done. Fine. So uh, what do I need now? So of course, this is the integral. Uh, now, can I give you this integral in means can I give a formula for this integral? Okay, it's it's just a notation at this moment. Okay, so it's just a notation at this moment. So I do not know what this notation means or what is the I that I have. So uh, is it possible to uh, have the definition means like some formula giving this uh, integral or not? Okay, so uh, we can actually uh, give you a formula. Uh, when my gamma is a piecewise smooth curve. Okay, so uh, if my gamma is a piecewise smooth curve, then we will be able to uh, give the explicit, give an explicit formula. Okay, so uh, let me see just a second. Network seems not so good. Okay, so this should be fine now. Okay, great. So uh, what is the formula? So let me write it down. So in case gamma is piecewise smooth. Okay, so then this integral, whatever I have written, the demand still this integral, then I, which is a to b f of d gamma, so this is nothing but a to b f of t gamma prime t dt okay so that's the formula for the riemann stages integral so uh, if uh, i have that gamma is a piecewise smooth curve uh, with all this like in this theorem above then what i can have is that uh, the integral is nothing but a to b f t gamma prime t dt okay so remember i had told you that uh, this uh, gamma v gamma was given by a to b gamma prime t dt in absolute value okay so that was of course here uh, this function was complex thing and all that so uh, 
you see gamma prime t appears over here and i get i is a to b f of d gamma which means a to b f t gamma prime t dt okay so one can use this formula so if your gamma is reasonably simple enough uh, that you can take its derivative and uh, you can make sense um, then gamma prime is also continuous so then uh, of course or even if it is piecewise um, like piecewise continuous that is also fine so therefore you can integrate a to b f t gamma prime t dt okay so that's the formula okay uh, great and uh, we have this now let me just uh, write down few uh, just linear relations that uh, one can see about Riemann steel gas integrals which we will probably use later when we have uh, some in when we integrate uh, two functions and their sum and all that so these are easy observations observations so what do i have i have uh, f and g are continuous functions on closed interval a b so here remember my f was a function on closed interval a b okay so and i was only integrating on the curve okay so later what we will happen what will happen when we do complex integration we are going to take function defined on a curve because there the functions are no longer going to be defined on uh, closed interval a b they will be defined on some open set so we are going to integrate on the curve the, and the function will also be defined on the curve okay so accordingly we will have to modify the definition we will see later so at this moment my f and g are defined on closed interval a b and uh, let's say gamma and sigma are of bounded variation uh, on closed interval a b so these are also functions on closed interval a b which are of bounded variation then uh, for for any uh, scalar, scalar C and D in the set of complex numbers, uh, we have uh, these kind of linearity properties. So number one, A to B, uh, F, or let's just C times F plus D times G of D gamma is nothing but C times A to B f d gamma plus d a to b uh, f times d sigma and uh, similar sorry what am i writing g d gamma and similarly i am having a to b f of d uh, so where my curve is now this time c gamma plus d sigma here i am going to have c uh, a to b f d gamma plus d a to b f d sigma okay so we have these kind of linearity properties uh, it doesn't matter whether you sum two functions with a scalar and integrate over gamma uh, you you are going to you, you can individually integrate them over gamma and uh, multiply with the scalars and take their sum similarly if you are integrating your function f over some uh, curve uh, which is obtained by taking linear combination of two other curves then uh, you can as well integrate your function individually on each of these curves and then you can uh, take the linear combination okay so these are uh, some easy observations of course so these things will follow from the definition i'm not going to do that because uh, like it's you, you can just apply the theorem and you will get it okay so fine uh, this is what we have and now uh, we need to uh, means i'm going to talk about the complex integration so we have kind of understood uh, at least uh, from the statements that uh, what are the requirements that one needs to make sense of uh, integration on a path okay so here of course my functions were uh, defined on some closed interval a b taking values in c but later my functions will also not be defined anymore on closed interval a b they could be defined anywhere in an open set uh, open subset of c so okay we will see so uh, let's uh, get going so is this all clear so far 
Okay, I have essentially made only statements, not any proofs. But are these clear? Whatever I have said so far. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So uh, therefore, uh, let us now. Uh, this is uh, what follows is going to be the complex definition of complex integral, and you will see how uh, related this is with the um, demand uh, this thing. Okay, so let's see. So let's start with the following definition. So let um, gamma from closed interval a b to c be a uh, path by trace of gamma trace of gamma we mean the set we mean the set so uh, here i am taking this set of all uh, the images of gamma okay so set of all gamma t's so that t varies in the closed interval a b Okay, so that's the uh, definition of trace of uh, gamma. Okay, so I have a function. Uh, so gamma is a path, and trace of gamma is just means uh, whatever is the image, the image set. That's all. Okay, image set in C. Fine. Now uh, I'm going to define uh, what is complex integration. So definition coming next. So let uh, gamma from closed interval a b to C be a function of bounded variation of course this is what is needed because i want to integrate on curves and uh, for that i must have functions which are curves of which are of bounded variation suppose f is a function defined defined on trace of gamma okay so as i said I am going to define. Uh, I am going to deal with functions which are defined on uh, subsets of complex number. Okay, so it's no longer be defined on gamma. Uh, it no longer will be defined on closed interval a b, but rather on uh, uh, on subsets of complex numbers. So therefore, what I am saying here this time, I have a function which is defined on the trace of gamma. Okay, so that means uh, like the function itself is defined on this particular set. Okay. So uh, is defined on this fun on this set and is continuous. So I have this thing. Okay, is continuous uh, there. So it means it's it's continuous on that set. Then the integral. So it is often called the line integral or the like uh, some path integral whatever you wish line slash path integral so then the integral of f along gamma i generally denoted by is denoted by integral f over gamma i just use this uh, symbol okay and uh, is defined defined to be what is to be a to b f of gamma t so this is uh, because of course my function is this time uh, defined on the trace of gamma so each of the like the function f takes values means like f is defined on the set gamma t so i have to take integral from a to b f of gamma t and uh, uh, just d of gamma t so this is the way i have i am defining it as the demand still this integral okay so exactly whatever i had over here i said this was what so this is like one can also write it as a to b f t d gamma t okay so whatever that means so this is what i is called or i is denoted as so here exactly the same thing is that is, is the thing that I am having, but except that here my uh, function, which I was integrating, let's say in this particular theorem, in this riemann stiles integral theorem, I was integrating the function f, which was defined on closed interval a b, but this time I am integrating the function f composed gamma, which is defined on closed interval a b, or you can say I am integrating the function f, 
which is defined on gamma t. So therefore, or gamma. So therefore, here essentially, so this is nothing but the Riemann Stilges integral. The Riemann Stilges integral of f composed gamma on gamma. Okay, so that is what is uh, what we are going to take here because my function f itself is defined on gamma t. It's no longer if defined on closed interval levy. I already told you that in complex numbers, it means in, in complex analysis, we are going to take functions which are defined on subsets of C. So there is no reason why there will be an interval and things like that. So uh, there could be several uh, other issues. So that is the reason why we are only going to be interested on functions which are defined on uh, like let's say some gamma and then I am going to integrate on that gamma itself. Okay, so basically what I am saying that this integral, uh, integral f over gamma or the line integral of f along gamma is nothing but the Riemann Stilges integral of f composed gamma on the curve gamma. Okay, so whatever I have defined over here, so or with respect to gamma. So let me, since I was writing with respect to, let me do that composed gamma with respect to gamma. Okay, so this is what uh, is the definition of the line integral. So is this clear, the definition? Yeah? Yes. yes sir. What I am doing, yes, uh, there is a slight difference. That means like, of course, I am going to use whatever the theorem that I have stated. I have taken gamma to be uh, a, a function of bounded variation and all of that, whatever we had in Riemann stages integral, but there my function f was defined on closed interval a b. Okay, but remember that as I said, I might need to integrate functions which are no longer uh, defined on closed interval a b, but rather defined on some uh, subset of complex numbers. So what we are going to do, we are going to integrate those functions which are defined on trace of a path at least. And therefore, what is the definition? That definition is, it is the Riemann Stilges integral of F composed gamma with respect to gamma. Okay, so it, it should be very clear because for instance, my F to start with is not defined on closed interval levy. It's, it's only defined on um, gamma of T. Okay, so F composed gamma is of course a continuous function anyway. So that is what it is. So this is the definition of uh, the line integral. And uh, of course, uh, here I gave you one formula which uh, tells you how to calculate the Riemann Stilges integral if your uh, path is piecewise smooth. So similarly, here also I am going to give you one formula which will work uh, for uh, path which are piecewise smooth. And effectively, we are going to mostly work with those kind of paths. Okay, because otherwise calculating Riemann still this integral itself is difficult. Okay, so uh, here we are having, we are also taking F composed gamma and all that. So we don't want to complicate things further. So mostly we are going to work with paths which are piecewise smooth. Okay, so if we uh, further uh, assume uh, that gamma is piecewise smooth, If I assume that gamma is piecewise smooth, then we have, so it's 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 just uh, remains still this integral. So we have integral of f over gamma will be what? Tell me a to b. What will be uh, this integral therefore, if my gamma is piecewise smooth? Remember what I have done over here. From here, tell me what will be the integral? F gamma t into gamma dt dt. Very good. F of gamma t gamma prime t dt. So just take this one uh, as the definition if you wish. Okay. So of course, as I said, the definition is actually given in terms of the Riemann Stilges integral, but uh, effectively uh, to calculate integrals and all that, we are going to work with piecewise smooth curves. And uh, therefore, you will be able to apply this uh, formula that the integral of f over gamma is given by a to b f of gamma t gamma prime t dt. Okay, so that's the statement. So uh, we are like, unless I am specifying otherwise, uh, we are going to take uh, curves which are going to be piecewise smooth. Okay, so uh, of course, here also 
um, just from the definition itself you will be able to uh, calculate or show for instance that uh, you can easy observation easy observation is that if i have uh, functions uh, defined on gamma on gamma t so on uh, on this set and or on trace of gamma uh, and some c is some scalar uh, then then if i integrate uh, f plus g over gamma um, this is same as integral of f over gamma plus integral of g over gamma and uh, similarly i will have that integral of c times f over gamma is c times integral of f over gamma so these are some basic uh, things okay so fine so uh, uh, this is the definition now what i am going to do i am going to let's say uh, show you uh, by means of some examples that what it means to integrate a function over some curve okay so we are going to see that and uh, we will see if things if we can calculate some of the integrals without uh, much trouble okay so let's see so uh, here is the first example of a complex integration that we are going to do so here my function is f of z is 1 over z so this function is defined uh, on uh, non zero complex numbers okay and uh, what is my gamma uh, my gamma is uh, defined uh, gamma of t so generally it will be defined on closed interval 0 1 but you can also define it closed interval uh, a b okay so here my function gamma is defined over closed interval as 0 to 1 so the gamma is t going to e to the power 2 pi i t okay so uh, if i want to draw the picture then what i am doing essentially is that i am going to integrate this function 1 over z over this uh, circle fine so i am going to integrate my function f of t equal f of z equal to 1 over z over this circle okay and then i would like to understand if i can uh, integrate and if i can make sense of like you can figure out what are these integrals okay so is the problem clear fine yes sir i'm going to integrate this function f of z equal to 1 over z over this uh, curve that i have drawn over here t going to e to the power 2 pi i t so it's 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 a circle of radius one so this quantity is one anyway so tell me what is the formula now integral of f over gamma would be what a to b which is 0 to 1 yeah f of gamma, yeah. gamma prime t so tell me what is f of gamma t 1 upon e to the power 2 pi e to pi t and what is gamma prime t now minus 2 pi i there is no sorry mind. plus 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 2 pi 2 pi i t plus 2 pi i into 2 pi i t 2 pi i t very good yes so again, because this one goes away and therefore i have to you see this is a complex number but essentially all the yeah. i is a complex number sir t nahi aayega sir t nahi aayega sir t nahi aayega 2 pi i ke sath so 0 to 1 uh, of uh, 2 pi i uh, dt okay so 2 pi i is just a scalar i'm going to take it out and this is just a real integral as i said uh, we had that real uh, riemann stages integral and then we uh, effectively came to the riemann integral now i have to integral 2 pi i over uh, from uh, between 0 to t uh, sorry 0 to 1 so i am going to get 2 pi i clear is it clear yes sir. yes and yeah, this is very simple yes, sir. okay fine now uh, let's uh, do another one so here i have taken one upon z okay so this is a very special function we will come back to that like why it is special and all this okay so let us take uh, a similar function so f of z equal to z power m for 
m not equal to 1 and let's say for safety you take z not equal to 0 doesn't matter really okay so m is uh, not equal to 1 okay so uh, of course you can take uh, z equal to 0 if m is positive but uh, i'm just uh, trying to take uh, z not equal to 0 okay so let me write if m is less than 0 fine so this is my function and i have exactly the same curve so tell me what is this time integral of f over gamma so this is going to be 0 to 1 tell me what do i get e to the power 2 e to by a into m sorry i could not follow e, e raised to e to the power 2 pi i am t times 2 pi i into e to the power 2 pi i t again dt so therefore this is let's take out this 2 pi i doesn't matter 0 to 1 e to the power 2 pi i m plus 1 times t dt correct do you all agree to this yes, yes sir. sir okay yes, sir. now uh, what do i have what can i say about this integral so let us this is a complex function so let's break it into two parts real and com real and imaginary so cos of 2 pi i sorry not 2 pi i anymore 2 pi m plus 1 t plus i times sine 2 pi m plus 1 times t okay so dt okay so here notice one thing my m is not equal to 1 uh, not equal to minus 1 sorry what did i write this should be minus 1 i wanted to write minus 1 yeah because i have already taken care of 1 upon z so here m is not equal to minus 1 okay so that is what i am taking so therefore m plus 1 is a non zero uh, integer similar uh, so therefore this cosine function so if m plus 1 is 0 then cosine of 2 pi times 0 times t is just a constant similarly sine 2 pi 0 times t it's a constant again but if you take m not equal to minus 1 then this sine and cosine functions these are non constant functions right correct yes sir not only that what i have in addition is that these ones cosine and sine so here you see i have taken the interval to be 0 to 1 this cosine 2 pi t for example is a periodic function where whatever is and it's symmetric around x axis okay for example if i draw the picture of cos 2 pi what will be cos 2 pi cos 2 pi will be something like this cos 2 pi t between 0 and 1 this will be cos 2 pi t and if i draw a sine so sine will be okay so have i drawn it correctly probably not right just just a moment so i think i should yeah so it will be like this at 2 pi also it is cos 2 pi is 1 right yeah so this is 0 this is 1 and similarly sine is like this between 0 and 1 correct sine this is sine 2 pi that is cos 2 pi correct yes indeed so what happens so if you take these integrals from 0 to 1 these integrals are 0 0 0 0 like this 0 cancelled over by this this one is getting cancelled by this similarly here the whole thing is getting cancelled by this so therefore like it's it's only i have uh, written it as uh, written only the function like drawn the cos 2 pi t and sine 2 pi t if you take cos 3 pi, uh, 4 times pi t and sine 4 times pi t you are just going to have this same curve getting repeated twice and thrice whatever depending on whatever is your m plus one okay and uh, if if m plus one is negative also uh, these things doesn't going it's not going to matter cos is a uh, even function sine is an odd function so only the, the plus or minus is going to anyway come out so effectively what it gives me tell me what is the integral therefore since m is not equal to zero so m is not equal to minus one so therefore what do i get what is this integral now 
by S sine 2 pi yeah. plus by T upon 2 pi. So what do I get effectively? At the end, you can of course do it by your integration knowledge of integration of cosine and sine. But uh, what I have told you from there, it should be clear that this is equal to zero, right? Yes, sir. So yeah, you can just integrate what is cos, what is sine and all of that. But uh, because anyway here, uh, <coughs> you are going to get only like at 2 pi, sine 2 pi and cos 2 pi is the same. Sine 2 pi and sine 0 is same. Cos 2 pi, cos 0 is same. So anyway, you are going to get uh, this integral to be equal to zero. Okay, so remember this uh, particular example, we might use this at various stages. Okay, so one upon Z is a special function and uh, Z to the power M for M not equal to minus one is a function of different category. Okay, so we will see what do I mean by that later. Okay. Sir, sir, here M is integer number. Yeah, yeah, M is integer. Yeah, I should have probably been using Z. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, sir, sir, ca can't we can't we integrate directly, sir? E raised to two pi i m plus one t. You can do. That. You can. You could have done integration of cos. You could have done integration of sine. But there also you would have got zero only, right? Isn't it? Because if you integrate, yes. you are going to get sine. Now sine zero and sine two pi are the same. Similarly, if you integrate sine, you are going to get cos, and uh, you are going to get uh, means the at zero and two pi that values are the same. So anyway, you are no, if we integrate the exponential term directly. Yes, that's without that's what I'm saying, sir. Okay, okay. You I want mean, you, you want to integrate exponential directly? E raised to x, um, e raised to t. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is also. Uh, uh, so two pi i m plus one is constant, so we sure. can integrate. Sure, sure, no problem. Yeah, you could have done it there also, but you see why I did not do it because uh, this is a priori a complex function, right? You do not know how to integrate complex things. Like we have not integrated that. So I was writing it in terms of real part and imaginary part so that you directly use uh, whatever you know for integration of real functions of real variable. Okay, real variable and taking values in R. Okay. That's the only reason. Yeah, you could have done it. You get the same thing, of course. Okay, great. So um, that's what we have. And now um, I need to tell you about another uh, another means. What do you call uh, thing that we generally do in uh, taking while doing Riemann integration and things like that? You must have done uh, what is called change of variable, right? This is a very useful thing that we generally use when we have integration we take change of variable and reduce certain integral to certain other form and then we try to say that we can integrate and all this so similarly in an anal analogous way there is a no notion of uh, change of variable here as well okay so uh, let me give the definition first okay so what do i have so two piecewise smooth curve let me call it as I said, I'm going to work with essentially piecewise smooth curve. So two piecewise smooth curve. Um, yeah, actually, let me define it for smooth curve because then I have to take care of otherwise a lot of these points where there is some trouble. So two smooth curves, but things will work out essentially the same way gamma 1 from closed interval a p to c and gamma 2 from closed interval c d to c uh, are called smooth are called equivalent or smooth equivalent whatever you wish smooth equivalent if there exists a c1 a 1 1 there exists an injecting C1 function lambda from closed interval CD to closed interval AB such that lambda of C is equal to A, lambda of D is equal to B, 
and I can get gamma 2 of t is nothing but gamma 1 of lambda t. Okay. So if I have this, then I can call these two functions are uh, equivalent or smooth equivalent. So that is gamma 2 is nothing but gamma 1 composed lambda. Okay. So if I have this kind of a phenomena, so this is exactly the change of variable, uh, this lambda. So if I have this uh, thing, then uh, we call that gamma 1 and gamma 2 are equivalent. Okay, so uh, we denote this by gamma 1 equivalent to gamma 2 like this. Okay, so uh, exactly what when you take change of variable the kind of thing that you do okay so the same thing here i have two curves uh, from a to b to c and c to d to c and we are going to call it that they are equivalent or smooth equivalent if there exists an injective c1 function c1 means again like smooth continuously differentiable function uh, such that uh, gamma 2 is gamma 1 composed lambda Okay, so if we have that, then we can say that uh, gamma 1 is equivalent to gamma 2. Okay, so uh, this is something which I will uh, leave it to you to prove that exercise. Uh, the relation, the equivalent, the relation that two smooth curves, curves are equivalent. is an equivalence relation okay so this is something which uh, will not be very difficult to prove uh, and you will be able to do it uh, on your own okay so uh, this is what uh, we have now uh, what i am more interested to do is that uh, you see when we did change a variable in uh, real analysis or in Riemann integration. We saw that upon change, upon having a change of variable, the integral did not change. Okay, so here also we are going to have the same theorem, and uh, probably this will be the last thing which I will be able to prove today. So theorem says that let gamma one is equivalent to gamma two, then integral of f over gamma 1 is same as integral of f over gamma 2 where of course you understand that f is a function which is defined uh, on a set uh, which like uh, which is defined on the union of this uh, trace of gamma 1 and trace of gamma 2 okay so gamma 1 and gamma 2 is this one and uh, yeah Okay, so this is what uh, I have and okay, fine. So anyway, uh, effectively you will see that uh, because of this thing, uh, my, yeah, just, just a second. So lambda is from CD to AB, yeah. Yeah, okay, fine. So uh, whatever it may be. So this is what is the theorem that uh, we have. So. If I have two uh, smooth curves or piecewise smooth curves also, which are equivalent, then the integral is going to remain the same. So that is, as I said, it's just the change of variable that we'll do in case of Riemann integration. So how do I do this? I'm just going to write down the real part and imaginary part separately, separate things out and the proof will be uh, immediate. Okay, so let us write it down. So let us write f equal to uh, let's say u plus iv and i write gamma i is uh, alpha i so let me write gamma j too many i's otherwise gamma j is equal to alpha j plus i beta j okay so here j is one and two so i have uh, separated my functions as well as the curves in real part and imaginary part fine so once i have this so let us look at the definition so we know what is the definition of f over gamma 1 so this is a to b f of gamma 1 t uh, gamma 1 prime t dt 
So this is what is the definition. And this will therefore be a to b f of, uh, or let me write u of, u of gamma 1 t plus i times v of gamma 1 t and uh, times I have gamma 1 prime. So this is alpha 1 prime t plus i times alpha 2 prime t dt. Fine. This is what I get. And uh, if you open things up, what do you get? Uh, let me just do it quickly. So uh, u of gamma 1 t alpha 1 prime of t dt minus a to b v of gamma 1 t alpha 2 prime t dt. Sorry, here I wrote what? Alpha 1 plus beta 1, right? So not alpha 2. Sorry, so this is beta 1. So this should be beta 1. Yeah, and uh, plus i times a to b u of gamma 1 t beta 1 prime t dt and uh, plus i times a to b v of uh, gamma 1 t uh, alpha 1 prime t dt. Okay, so uh, if you just open things up, uh, you are going to get this one uh, eventually. Okay, so similarly, uh, you can similarly, if you write over gamma 2, what is your f? Similarly, you will be able to see that this is a to b u of uh, gamma 2 t. So let me not uh, write that. Let me just do the following. I'll just put i and j or j. So this is, let's say, gamma j. So this is gamma j, gamma j, gamma j, gamma j, alpha j, alpha j, gamma j, alpha j, gamma j, beta j, gamma j, beta j, gamma j, alpha j. Okay, so this is what is uh, that we have. So we know for j equal to 1 comma 2. I have this. Okay, great. So uh, now what I'm going to do is that I have this uh, lambda thing going on. So I have to somehow insert that and appropriately I will show one part is equal to the other part and all that. Okay, so uh, these are, so each of the inter integrals that I have, these are uh, integrals uh, which are, uh, for example, here these are all functions of real variable and these are integra integrals of uh, like real integrals of real valued functions of real variable. So therefore, uh, I am going to use uh, like I'm going to equate these sub, sub integrals accordingly. Okay, and I'm going to use the fact that, okay, so here I have made a mistake. So if it is A to B, so accordingly there will be C to D. Okay, so you have to be careful what I'm doing. So either it's A to B or it is C to D. Actually, it's, it would have been better if I would have written the whole damn thing separately. Anyway. So let me write like this. Gamma 2 F C to D U of gamma 2 plus alpha 2 prime T D T minus C to D V of gamma 2 T beta 2 prime T D T plus I times C to D U of gamma 2 T beta 1 prime T D T plus I times C to D V of gamma 2t uh, beta 2 prime t. Uh, sorry, beta, yeah, beta two. 2. Sorry, this one should be alpha 2. Yeah, is it fine? Whatever I have written, say beta 2. Yeah, beta 2. Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. So, anyway, uh, this is done. Now, my idea would be to let's say equate this guy and this guy. Similarly, this guy and this guy and all of that. Okay, so that's very uh, obvious thing which uh, you can predict. So uh, let me uh, give you uh, one like let me show it explicitly for one case. Okay, so we have uh, lambda 
which is from uh, CD to AB. And the property of lambda is uh, such that uh, lambda 2 is gamma, uh, sorry, gamma 2 is gamma 1 composed lambda, right? This is the property. Fine. So let us uh, begin with one, one, the very first one. So uh, C to D U of gamma 2 T and alpha 2 prime T DT. Okay. So that means I am going to work with this integral and I will show that this is going to be same as this integral. So let us see if I can do that. Okay, so this guy, if I uh, replace it, so this is C to D U of gamma 2 means gamma 1 of lambda T plus uh, times alpha 2 prime T DT. Very nice. Now, uh, since you have gamma 2 is uh, gamma 1 composed lambda, you this will also implies that this will also imply that alpha 2 is alpha 1 composed lambda and when you have some function which is composed like this the derivative is given by chain rule so gamma 2 prime t is going to be alpha 1 prime lambda t times lambda prime t dt or yeah lambda prime t that's all there's no dt over here so this i can write as c to d u of gamma 1 of lambda t then i have lambda 1 prime uh, sorry alpha 1 prime of lambda t lambda prime t dt okay this is what i have now here you see this is now what it matters is is a change of variable of one variable this is nothing but a to b u of gamma 1 t alpha 1 prime of t dt okay so here if i replace t by lambda t what i am going to get i am just so these two are equal just from uh, change of variable variable of real integrals of real value function okay so uh, i get this uh, immediately in that way okay so here you see in this uh, integral last integral if you just replace t by uh, let's say lambda lambda t you are going to get that uh, since t if t is equal to a you know that um, yeah so yes that is what i guess correct yeah this is this is fine i guess just a second yeah yeah this is all right. Yes, because uh, gamma, uh, what is, just let me see. Yeah, what is gamma of C? Gamma of C is A. Yeah, and what is gamma, sorry, lambda of C is A, lambda of D is B. So this is fine, absolutely. So this is A to B, uh, U, uh, gamma 1T, uh, alpha 1 prime T, DT. Yeah, this is just change of variable of uh, real integral. Uh, of real value function. So here you see uh, this uh, guy is, uh, let me mark it in a different ink. So this guy is equal to this guy. So similarly, uh, all the four integrals, you can uh, show it equal. And therefore uh, this thing, which is just a tedious job of calculation is going to come through and it's going to give us that uh, if you have, if you make this change of variable, you are going to eventually get the integral to be the same okay so i'm going to stop over here and uh, in the next uh, class we are still going to continue looking at uh, some other kind of uh, you know uh, some other kind of properties that we have seen uh, in uh, real means for real integrals and what we can say for them in case of complex complex integrals and all that we will also see that for example if you have a
say you are not audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. I have to. I will stop here, and uh, we will see it in the next class. If you guys have any question, you can ask me. Somehow, my call was dropped. Are there any questions? <laughs>